Hi everybody, Mr. Ross here. I am ready to get us started with lesson 13 for module 3B. Um, today we are going to be looking at pages 12 through 19 of our story, A Tsunami Unfolds. If you haven't read the beginning parts of A Tsunami Unfolds, please go back to the previous video because um, today we're going to be going through the middle part of the book, pages 12 through 19. Uh, you're also going to need your Reader's and Writer's Journal. Uh, we're going to be working on pages 292 and 295. I have got our digital versions of both the story and our Reader's and Writer's Journal right here. Here is the story and here is the Reader's and Writer's Journal. So make sure you've got those handy with you as well. All right, let's get started with lesson 13. Before we jump into reading the story, let's look at what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to look at a tsunami unfolds and our learning target is I can compare first-hand and second-hand accounts. If you remember, a first-hand account is a, an account told by someone who was there, who saw it. They are telling what they saw directly. A second-hand account is someone who did research and is reporting about something that they did not necessarily see at that time. So we're going to be looking at the differences between uh, the facts of a first-hand account versus a second-hand account. Before we do that, we're going to look at our vocabulary words really quickly. The first word is evacuate. I went over this one before, but evacuate means to remove from a situation. We have an evacuation plan if there is an earthquake or a, a fire drill at our school. There's an evacuation plan. We have to evacuate. Our next word is scrambling. Scrambling doesn't mean like we're scrambling our eggs. Scrambling means to move or act quickly. When we have a fire drill, we have to scramble to get our things and get outside. Monitoring. Monitoring means to watch something closely. And I put this picture of a person monitoring their heart rate with their smartwatch. And I think that's all my vocab words. We'll come back to this later. All right. Let's start with our story. If you remember uh, in our previous story, we were learning about the tsunami in Japan on in 2011. <clears throat> so let's continue. Scrambling for safety. By now the sky above the coast was dark. The sea was churning. Loudspeaker systems were blaring warning, so warning again and again, save yourself. Immediately evacuate to higher ground. Save yourselves. Did you know how a tsunami forms? An earthquake is caused by the sudden movement of Earth's tectonic plates. This violent movement displaces huge amounts of water, which creates waves in the sea. As the waves travel towards the land, they grow larger and become deadlier. We knew that. Did you know? Sea walls. Japan has used sea walls to protect villages from the sea for many years. Sea walls can make people think they are safe, and stop them from evacuating. But the sea walls can't always protect people against the giant waves of a tsunami. Parents rushed to locate their children. Inside buildings, people hurried to roofs and higher floors. Outdoors, people ran toward high ground. Some fishermen raced to the water, scrambling to get their boats out of the water before the tsunami hit. Meanwhile, people with electricity or internet and access were checking TVs and computers to get the latest news. The news was terrifying. Satellites high above Earth had captured images of the tsunami. It was absolutely massive. Before I move on, I want to point out this purple box here. I would say that this purple box would be a second-hand account because this isn't someone actually telling us what they saw. They're reporting what other people were doing. It never says, I saw fishermen going to the water. 
I saw people running to higher ground. So this is someone reporting, the author, reporting a second-hand account. Let's go on. The tsunami hits. The first wave hit the coast about 15 to 30 minutes after the tsunami warning came. From a distance, people could see a huge black shape rising into the air. At first, it looked like smoke or a cloud. Then people realized the black plume was actually the tsunami crashing into the shore. Did you know? A tsunami is also called a tidal wave or a seismic wave. In Japanese, the word tsunami is represented by two characters, su meaning harbor and nami meaning wave. Oh, harbor wave. The enormous waves, 128 feet in some areas, whoa, sailed right over the sea walls. Then the water smashed onto land, picking up everything in its path. Cars, houses, boats, buildings, pets, and people. It rolled through villages and streets, turning darker and darker as it swept up more debris. Real life. Yumi's experience. So, before I read this, this is probably going to be a first-hand account because we are going to be hearing directly from Yumi again. Only about 20 minutes passed before the water arrived from the east. It was carrying everything with it. Homes, hundreds of cars, and many, many people. Of course, people on land were trying to flee by car, but the water was much faster. It surrounded the airport in minutes. Wow, look at that picture of the airport covered in water. All right, we are on pages 16 and 17. We got a couple more pages to go. A nuclear disaster? At the Daiichi Power Plant, located on Japan's northeast coast, another crisis was brewing. The plant's nuclear reactor had shut down automatically after the earthquake's alert. And now, backup generators were on. The generators were doing a critical job, keeping the reactor cores cool to prevent a nuclear meltdown. Did you know? Nuclear power in Japan. In 2011, Japan had 54 nuclear reactors that produced about 30% of the country's electricity. The Daiichi plant, known as number one, had six of these reactors. Wow. I got some text right here. I'm going to move my thing here. Workers were busy monitoring damage from the quake when the giant tsunami surprised them, crashing right over the plant's sea wall. Water poured into the lower floors, flooding the plant's generators. Workers quickly grew alarmed. If the generators stopped working, it, could be, it would become a dangerous situation. Did you know? What is a nuclear meltdown? You might want to remember this one for the Readers and Writers Journal. The core of a nuclear reactor gets very hot. In order to prevent overheating, a cooling system keeps the core cool. If this cooling system fails, the fuel rods inside the reactor can be begin to melt and release dangerous levels of radiation into the air and water. Hashtag quake. Hit Daichi plant heart. Checking damage now. Wow. You might have to check that out when you have your uh, Realize Reader app. All right, let's go into the last two pages. We're almost done. A wave of destruction. Many people took photos of the incredible tsunami as it swept across northeast Japan. People from all over the world watched, too, as TV stations and internet broadcasts live images. Wow, look at those cars. Oh, we've got another real life. I'm going to try my best to say it. Rikanzu I'm not even gonna try. Japan. Setsuko, a cook at a nursery school, ignored the tsunami warning at first. 
Oh, this must be a first-hand account. Similar warnings came all the time, and the school was a mile from the sea. Tsunamis never traveled this far inland. But minutes after the earthquake, a mysterious dark shape in the distance caught her eye. The tsunami. It was rushing toward the school. The powerful water could destroy the wooden school building in minutes. Setsuko and the teachers quickly gathered all the children and raced towards a nearby hill, getting them to safety. The water swept across the land, and then it began rolling back toward the sea, carrying more debris with it. At Sendai Airport, it dumped hundreds of cars, trucks, and even planes. So when a tsunami hits, that huge wave comes, and then that water doesn't stay there. It goes back in the ocean, and it goes... So all of the things that it grabbed, it pulls it back out into the ocean. So all of the houses, the cars, the boats, the street lamps, all those things are getting sucked right back in the ocean. That's why it says the water swept across the land and it began rolling back toward the sea, carrying more debris with it. Prime Minister Kan Naoto, the leader of Japan, had set up an emergency command center in Tokyo earlier in the day. Officials began dispatching rescue workers, including 100,000 members of the Japanese Self-Defense Force, to areas hit hard by the quake and tsunami. Wow, it's a very destructive natural disaster. Let's look at what we're going to be doing in our Readers and Writers Journal. I did take some notes, so that should help us get started. All right, let me move this over here. Your first thing you're going to be doing is your benchmark vocabulary. We've got the words evacuate, scrambling, monitoring, and broadcast. You're going to make one sentence for each of those words. If you don't remember what those words mean, you can rewind the video when I went over the vocabulary. The next part you're going to do is down here. It says reread pages 16 and 17 of A Tsunami Unfolds. What is a nuclear meltdown? Use details from the text to support your answer. Well, let's look at page 16 and 17. I told us you might need to remember that. I believe it was right here, if it loads. Right here, what is a nuclear meltdown on page 17? You're going to need to review that so that you can answer this question. I used a sentence starter for you where it says a nuclear meltdown is, and you can tell the reader what it is, and then you can use the details from the text to support your answer with my sentence starter according to the text. And you can say according to the text, it says, and give some details about how a nuclear meltdown happens or what a nuclear meltdown is. All right, let's look at our last page, which is going to be page 295, I believe. Yep, 295. You are going to begin researching and getting ready for your PBA. It says, begin planning and pre-writing for a news report about the impact of a natural disaster on the Earth and its inhabitants. Brainstorm types of natural disasters and sources you can find to inform about the event and effects. Then state your topic, audience, and purpose, and gather notes from your research to support your writing. Remember to keep track of the source, each source that you use. So up here, well, maybe it's over here, yep, up here, I wrote down some of the different natural disasters that you could make a news report on. You could make a news report on an earthquake, on a tsunami, on a volcanic eruption, on a mudslide, on a tornado, on a hurricane. Um, I think that's those are the only ones I could think of. If you can think of another natural disaster, maybe a flood, like a river flood, that would be a good one. I didn't write that down. So I want you to begin researching what are some things you could put in your news report about a natural disaster and how does it affect humans um, how does it affect animals? How does it infect our environment? So I put this asterisk here that says find sources on Kittle.co. If you remember, we in my class used Kittle.co this year to do research on 
our um, important scientist or our important researcher. Kittle.co looks like this. You can put in your topic and you will be able to find some information about earthquakes or about tsunamis. This has really good information and I would use this as finding our sources. Make sure that you fill out on here. This should not take too long because this is just pre-writing. You're not actually going to be writing. So your topic would be your natural disaster. Your audience is going to be whoever you choose. You could say um, TV viewers. Um, you could say um, people who need to be warned about the natural disaster. And your purpose is going to be to inform or um, teach people about the effects of a natural disaster. When I've done this in the past, students have had a lot of fun. They got fake microphones and they recorded themselves reading their um, news report, made it look like they were in a newsroom, put on a, a tie or a suit, and really made it, it, made it fun. Uh, I even had some students pretend like they were in an earthquake giving their um, news report and they had their friend or their family members shaking the camera and make it look like an earthquake. So there's a lot of fun things you could do with this uh, PBA. So first step is to do some research and find out what information you need to tell your audience during your news report. All right, that is all we have for today, folks. Wow, that was a long one. If you have questions or you need help, please reach out to your teacher. Have a good day.